Now, just because I gave you a structure and a formula, please do not think for one moment that every speech is the same. There are so many theatrical choices within this outline. How about four different ways you can open the speech? What I opened with was a statement. It never ceases to amaze me. One of the most dramatic statements I ever heard five years ago, I was speaking for Young President's organization. One of the other speakers, Newt Gingrich, walks out. Forget politics, it was a heck of an opening. <laughs> five years later, I remember exactly what he said without writing it down. He walked out and said, if you were born today, you would already owe $186,000 to pay your share of the national debt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but again, I challenge you. An audience that heard you speak five years ago, would they remember your opening? How about opening with a quote? As the great philosopher Raquel Welsh said, <laughs> style is being yourself, but on purpose. <laughs> and every time you stand up to address an audience, you have to be yourself, but slightly larger than life, in other words, on purpose. Now, will you notice by opening with a quote, what I did not do was say, I would like to start my speech with a quote. <laughs> and I am going to quote a movie star for dramatic comic effect. No, no, no. Just tell them the quote. Just do it. Edit the nub. You could start with a bold claim. In the next 45 minutes, I'm going to teach you more about speaking than you could learn in a college course. If you start your speech with a bold claim, make sure you can follow through. <laughs> Don't promise something you can't do. And how about, of course, one of the favorite ways to start a speech is with a story. But the story always has to tie into what are you talking about, you or the situation that you're in. Let's pretend I started this speech with a story. So give me short applause and I'll start again. Here's Patricia Fripp to speak. I hope you like conferences as much as I do. Of course, I spend my life at them. A few years ago, 27 other speakers and myself in San Diego for a meeting. After the meeting, we go out to dinner. And after dinner, we decide we'd like ice cream. So we turn up at Baskin Robbins exactly 9 p.m. when the manager was turning around the closed side. Well, you could tell he was the manager, 16 years old, little white jacket, a cat. <laughs> One of my pals gets out, knocks on doors, excuse me, 28 people for ice cream, 10 minutes work. Kid says, sir, we've closed. My friend looks through the glass door, sees two other kids, thinks, well, Three kids working for minimum wage, you'll make them an offer. He said, $30 for you, three, and the sale of 28 ice creams. They huddle. <laughs> A focus group to study the problem. <laughs> the kid comes back and said, could you make it $40? <laughs> we settle for 30 but being sales trainers, we really appreciated that he tried to get more. <laughs> because that young man realized two things I don't want you to ever forget. One, life is a series of sales situations. And two, the answer is no if you don't ask. And we are here this evening selling you on the concept that even the most dedicated Toastmasters can be even more effective in preparing and presenting powerful programs by understanding the three necessary ingredients in depth that belong in a presentation.
So don't just tell a story unless it ties in. So they are four ways that you might start a speech.